There's no question that open innovation is changing the world. It really is. If you think about it now, even in our personal lives, we can read reviews, we can ask people if they've been to one place or the other, or the hotel, or have they bought this, and someone who we don't even know from the other part of the world will provide their contribution, their opinion. By change the world, I mean change the systems that are in place in the world, be it government, or healthcare, or education, or, or business ecosystems. Open innovation allows businesses to think very creatively on solving problems and challenges that exist. It's a much more open environment where data and ideas and mentorship and funding can be shared. It also increases the speed with which we can do business, make decisions, find connections. I'm Olga Patel, and I'm a Senior Manager of Open Innovation for Mattel. And Mattel, being a consumer-centric company, has been utilizing open innovation approaches for years. We have a three-fold approach. The first and uh, one of the most important uh, directions for us is our toy inventors. We have an established toy inventor community from outside our company who submit their ideas to us regularly. We review them and, on average, up to 20% of our annual revenue comes from those submissions from our toy inventors. The second approach is a more recent one, and it's creating online crowdsourcing platforms for our brands, where consumers can come in, interact with our brands, provide their suggestions and comments, and ultimately help us build our pipelines for the brands. And then the third approach is having an online technical needs library, where we ask the world to help us solve our technical challenges that we don't have resources or expertise to solve internally. I'm Brandon Barnett. I'm Director of Business Innovation at Intel Corporation, uh, which of course is a very large manufacturing company. We make the computer chips that power the computer industry and in some sense the whole technology industry. Certainly innovation comes in many forms at Intel. There's the innovations we do to keep Moore's Law going, to invent the next microprocessor that makes things go faster and makes them smaller. Um, and a lot of that isn't done in an open way. A lot of that is proprietary. It's, it's the core of our business. But our position in, in that computing ecosystem is is such that we're able to, and it's to our best interest, to drive innovation broader in the ecosystem. New products and services, new experiences around computing, new usages. Um, and that's where open innovation can play a really strong role, um, because it's not necessarily sparking the products and services that we will sell, but it's creating that ecosystem for which our products and services will enter. So I have a few hats. One is kind of fundamental research on how open innovation happens within companies and markets and ecosystems. One is kind of consulting with, with our business units and outside the company on best practices of innovation. And the other is, is an open innovation experimental arm. How do we catalyze the the ecosystems make the changes um, in our business systems, in our cultural systems, in our social systems, such that um, society is helped, which makes room for more products and services. And that's where we engage with open innovation by mobilizing external entrepreneurs and helping them solve problems, identify and solve problems um, in their communities that create demand for, for products and services. My name is Keisha Levy, and the organization that I work with is Lennox International. I'm actually a global marketing operations leader. Our side of the business is commercial refrigeration, and the way that we found that works best for us is to really think about, from an open innovation standpoint, you can go anywhere with it. And that being said, we actually break it up into what we call wish lists versus shopping lists. The wish list is really the strategic initiatives that we look at. Um, usually more longer lead items, very research and development intensive, so it may take some time to that. Versus our shopping list is usually very tactical in nature. Uh, typically, it's a shorter lead time to get something to market. Um, and typically that, that technology may already exist. An example for us has been in the past, we were looking at a different type of motor. Um, this was on our shopping list, right? And we knew we needed an energy efficient motor. We knew we wanted something that would have some of the variable speed. We were able to canvas different motor manufacturers and found one particular motor manufacturer that worked well with what we were looking at. And that ended up being treadmill manufacturers. So 
who would think that refrigeration as well as a commercial refrigeration with treadmill manufacturing would have anything in common and it really is that motor that was developed behind the scenes. We introduced those motors uh, to the marketplace for commercial refrigeration. We were the first to market with that so there were some great benefits to us for us as a company as well as for the motor manufacturers as well. The organization has to realize that not all the smart people are working for the organization. There are other outside resources that we can tap into to solve our internal challenges. And that's a cultural shift. I think if we had approached it as um, a lot of traditional ways that we want to share IP or we want to have a lot of kind of open collaboration, there may have been some resistance. I couched it under a research program. Uh, how do we use open innovation not so much as a way to target a market or co-develop products or intellectual property, but how to research ecosystems in a way that is harnessing kind of the power of, of other people outside of the company. I don't talk about open innovation much. I talk about the results of our programs which employ open innovation techniques and often result in insights or um, new markets or new ideas for, for products and services that might serve the company. And that's a very different conversation to have with kind of traditional business units that may be a little more risk averse about sharing intellectual property or their own ideas. Again, that research umbrella um, has given me the ability to engage with that ecosystem and talk about our findings quite broadly, both within the company and outside the company. Um, and then we craft the strategies with our business units on what we would specifically do around those insights. One of the most important barriers and challenges for us was dealing with the legal aspects of open innovation. Being a toy company, we have very few ideas that come to us that are protected with IP. Most of them are just ideas of a play experience, a doll house, a horse. So we have to figure out how to protect us and those who submit their ideas to us. And sometimes we pay a ro royalty, sometimes it's work for hire, and sometimes consumers just give us their ideas. So it depends on case-by-case -case basis. I see open innovation being a key way to moving forward, especially on a collaborative nature and solving large problems. It's changing the business world tremendously. Now that we're able to reach in different parts of the world and make the connections, we can work much more effectively. We can find the areas of expertise, communities that we want to talk to very easily. Open innovation is just happening with Kickstarter and crowdfunding and crowdsourcing and programs like uh, what GE is doing with Quirky, um, accelerators. It allows everybody to be um, a thought leader, an entrepreneur, a business owner really changing the way we think, do business, and deliver value to our, to our customers.